The sermon for the sixth week after Pentecost is from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 13, verses 1 to 9, and also 18 to 23. The sermon is entitled, He Who Has Ears, Let Him Hear. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Trusting the Word. The powerful Word. Now, in our collect of the day, in our prayer, I don't know if you noticed that, but we prayed, we may so, well, I shall start from the beginning. Blessed Lord, since you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Hear, read, mark, learn, inwardly digest the Word. Because the Word is that powerful. The Word is everything in our life of faith. The Word of God. Because in the midst of the word of God and the flesh that we live in, we very well know the world that we live in. Pluralism, relativism, subjectivity, it's, well, in this day and age, how important it is to hear and mark and read and inwardly digest the powerful promise of Holy Scripture. Because in the Word, in the midst of our lives that was, as we live it, there we receive the riches of God's grace. There is no other Word, is there? Nothing compares to the Word of God. Nothing. Nothing at all. And there in His Word, we revel in great joy and peace and the forgiveness of sins. We we live in Christ Jesus, there in the Word. And there we go bear fruit, right? I'm the vine, you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And indeed, we bear fruit. So we go out, and I guess when I look at this text and I see the parable of the sower sowing this seed, it reminds me of this word proclaimed. Evangelism, outreach. I think the great misconception of evangelism is that somehow with our own great uh, coercive words or our great beautiful words, we can somehow win over someone to Christ. I guess we go out there and with that package, we, we tell them these beautiful words of the gospel, Christ and Him crucified, we pack it and we deliver it in a perfect way. We talk about sin inherited from the garden, the clear unfolding of our sin condition, and sharing them the good news of the blood of Christ, that Jesus comes for sinners, saving them from sin, death, and the power of the devil, referring to all the passages we know and really telling ourselves, wow, we got them this time. I've been there, trust me. Yet soon what happens? They smile and they say, sounds good, but no thank you. And soon what looms is that umbrella of discouragement in ourselves. Quickly we tell ourselves, what did I do wrong? What could I have done better? What words should I have used? It's in these opportunities that it is a successful moment because that word was cast. Because evangelism is not about winning. It's simply about being in your faith, proclaiming the truth, and trusting in the power and promise of God and His word. To proclaim the word as a lamp undeterred, as a salt of the earth, after all, look at Jesus, right? Of all people. 
The Word made flesh coming into this world. The divine God coming into this flesh and preaching. And what did he face? Did everyone come to believe in him? The answer is no. The Pharisees, the rulers, many people were against him. After all, <laughs> this is what led him to the cross, to his very own death, his mission. But the cross, the word fulfilled. The word. The power and truth of God's word. To hear it and understand it. To have faith by the grace of God that His Word given through the Scriptures, through the sacraments, there we find ourselves in the comforting promise in the power of God's Word. And by His Word, we bear fruit. Yes, in great joy by the Word, we know how to love and serve our neighbors. In this great victory by the Word, we stand tall and bold and confident as we are covered in His Word by the body and blood of Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Yes, in great hope we look outward into this world who is in great need of Christ alone. We trust in the power of God's word. As it reads in Isaiah, So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. Indeed, the word will accomplish what it wills. And thus, His Word, the Word, is the root to which we live, move, and have our being. That's why we hear it, read it, mark it, inwardly digest it. And we do those very things in the life of faith because we know what is around us. The world is struggling right now, spiritually. The state of the non-believer. The lack of soil shows the great plight of humanity. These things aren't just happening in the world. There's a reason for it, spiritually speaking, ever since the fall. The evil foe is there lurking in the shadows, throwing every shade of disbelief, twisting and redefining words to fit the narrative of the flesh, prowling around with words that seem so innocent and palatable, yet are there to destroy snatching away the word on this path. And those on rocky ground, yes, initially receiving the word with great joy. But when tribulation, when persecution, when trials arrived, just as quickly as they received this word, so quickly it goes away. The world is facing the spiritual roller coaster up and down, up and down, up and down. And for those dwelling in the thorns, the deceitfulness of riches, Indeed, the allure of the material, the trust in mammon, how beautiful these riches seem. They sparkle, they glow, they tout it and give you these promises of prosperity and security and peace and utter bliss. Yet what, the, yet what this glow doesn't tell you is that it will choke you from the word. And this is the world that we are living in. Do you, do you see it? The cosmic battle, the, the forces of darkness that are at hand as we go to the field. The evil, the fallen flesh continuing to infiltrate, attack, and destroy, ultimately turning away humanity from God's word. Yes, this Satan does. And so subtle it is, twisting God's word. Even seeing it today, the word being compromised in the umbrella of Christianity itself. Yes, we see the world, but we very well know these spiritual dangers are even in our personal midst. Because it's easy as we go on this journey of faith to forget the true dangers that are at hand. Do you see it? Especially in these times of isolation. 
these days and weeks progress. No one is immune. We, we continue to endure in the perseverance of Christ Jesus, in faith, as the spiritual eyes are open in that word as we read, mark, inwardly digest, and pray upon this very word. As this word, as our faith sees what is really going on and the temptations around us. The deceitfulness of riches. It's there, and you know it. The sufferings that we face in so many different ways as we take up the cross and follow him, they are there. The evil foe waging a war against our flesh. Relentless he is. Discouraged we become. Hopeless we may become. Saddened we may become. And yes, we can read this parable and as we read it, we hear the words, as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it and bears fruit. I think we quickly tell ourselves, I need to be that soil, right? <laughs> I need to be that good soil. I need to do that. As if being good soil is about us, about what we do in our work. See, this parable, as we heard about in the children's message, it's not about what we do, but it is about who is the, the giver, the one who is giving the seed. He who has ears, let him hear. Hearing is all about receiving, receiving from the Lord, the Lord that by His grace, His abundant compassion for you, He comes to us and He gives to us His word that restores and gives you His goodness, His righteousness. Yes, we in our sin can try to work ourselves, this good soil, by our word or, or by our works or by our legalism and morality. Yet we know that we do not earn this good soil, but rather it is the word of Christ outside of ourselves who comes to sow this seed by the sending of his son and there in faith by the work of the Holy Spirit. We hear those words, he who has ears, let him hear. Because we hear many things in this world. The life that we live right now, what a blessing it is to be in the word right now. The ears of faith. Faith that is given by the very word of God. The Holy Spirit is working right now by the very word of God. Hearing it and receiving it. Confession and absolution where the words of Christ are given to you. Hearing and receiving the power of God's word. Singing the Kyrie, the Lord have mercy, singing, this is the feast, hearing and receiving the words of victory in the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Hearing and receiving God's word as we read the scriptures this morning, the truth of God's word that gives you hope, that gives you life, that gives you the sustenance, the feeding that you need as you walk in this pilgrimage of faith. A lot is happening right now as you hear the sermon that convicts and comforts you in the righteousness of Christ. Again, it's all about what is given, the word. And indeed, the supper, the blessed word, the very body and blood of Jesus, here with us. He who has ears, let him hear. Because what do we hear this morning? The word of Christ, 
that by his word, he has made you good and holy, without spot and blemish. That by his word, this word made flesh came to the world, our true God, to make you righteous. For there is no other righteousness other than the blood that was shed for you. He who has ears, let him hear these words. There's a lot happening in our world today, but this word, it never changes. It's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And there we hear it and receive it yesterday, today, and tomorrow because the word is our only truth. This word, as we hear it and receive it, as we read it, as we inwardly digest, mark, and dwell upon it, let the word dwell within you richly. Because this word points you always, now and forever, to Christ. Time and time again, to the blessed comfort of Christ Jesus. In his cross for you, in his empty tomb for you. The place to which your ears, your faith clings the words of eternal life, the life that He has already given to each and every one of you. Hear the words of Christ. He who has ears, let him hear. Because this powerful word breaks through the sin, breaks through the separation, crushes the head of Satan, fights the spiritual battle and gives you victory, the peace that this world cannot give, the peace of Christ, His resurrection, that through His rising, you too have already risen to the newness of life. Because we are living in a world that is fluttering and fading. The grass, the flowers, they all go by the wayside. But the Word of God stands forever. The treasured word as we hear it. He who has ears, let him hear. Through all the noise, the spiritual fight, the suffering and stress, what a blessing it is to be here together. To be here together in the word. The word that forgives you all your sins. The gospel, Jesus, releasing you from your sin and death, giving you victory in his name. What other word can impart to you such things? What other word can promise and give you such things? A precious time it is as God's word is being proclaimed for you. And in his word and through his word, we go. We go out into the field, this world that needs this very word. Take heart, Jesus says, do not be afraid, because what is with you far surpasses any word of this world, because this word is Jesus Christ. And though we may face great weariness at this time and great struggle, the word is with you. For Christ, he died, he rose, he gives you and delivers you the great joy in his word, the forgiveness of sins. This is who you are as a blessed, redeemed child of God. Amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.